are we talking about today? Pregnancy and x-rays. The reason I'm bringing this up is because when I was going through x-ray school, I already had Sebastian, my son. I knew that I wanted to have another child at some point and I wasn't sure how that fit in with my career. In high school, there was a rumor that this girl got pregnant because her plan was to go into radiology and she didn't think that she'd be able to work in the field and have a family at the same time. That's completely untrue. You can absolutely work as a radiographer while you're pregnant. Now with that being said, there are certain precautions that you do need to take when you do find out that you're pregnant and working in a hospital. Whenever you discover that you are pregnant and you are working in the field of radiology, you need to first declare your pregnancy with your manager or supervisor. Once you declare your pregnancy, you meet with the radiation safety officer who might be a radiologist and they go over all of the risks that are associated with working in the field while being Mommy's pregnant. Once your manager knows about your pregnancy, they should order you a baby badge or a radiation uh, dosometer that is placed at the, your waistband. Now, when you're wearing lead, it goes underneath of your lead on your waist. Um, it's just the same as the one that you have on your collar that you would wear on your thyroid shield if you're wearing lead. In a way, it's simulating how much radiation exposure your fetus could be receiving from underneath of the lead. There is a limit that should not be surpassed for pregnant radiographers. It's important to declare your pregnancy as soon as possible because your baby is the most sensitive to radiation exposure during your first trimester and that's because the cells of a fetus are rapidly growing, they're rapidly dividing. There's a lot of change that happens in the cells which makes them prone to potential damage. Now with that being said, oftentimes your body repairs itself before even a second exposure is taken. So even though it's nothing really that you should worry about too much, you do need to take certain precautions and be aware that that first trimester it's important to try to stay away from x-rays as much as possible. That means use positioning aids instead of holding people. I cannot stress that enough. If you don't have to be in the room for an x-ray, you should not be in the room for an x-ray. Try to avoid doing everything portably. Go ahead and take a patient back to your room and stand behind the lead wall before making the exposure. Even though it may be more of a pain to bring them back, just do it. When I was pregnant with my daughter and I worked at a children's hospital primarily, there was a lot of holding involved, but thankfully I had some really awesome coworkers that would hold the patients for me and I would make the exposure. Help your fellow coworkers out who are pregnant and help their babies so that they're not being exposed just in case. In addition to holding, a lot of radiation exposure comes from doing fluoroscopy and surgery. And there's a rotation for x-ray techs where they have like a week of fluoro, a week of surgery, and then a week of department. And they all work their way through that each week. And I'm not saying that a pregnant radiographer can never be exposed in those circumstances but if you're able to and if you want to be an awesome coworker, take their fluoro take their surgery like especially when they're super pregnant and they have to go up and push around the c-arm with a surgeon who's yelling at them and they're super hormonal like just be a good coworker, look out for each other help a woman out okay as a radiographer, if you're pregnant and you aren't able to avoid surgery and fluoro and being exposed, then I would suggest using the two-piece aprons, the ones that have the vest and the skirt, and or the wraparound aprons that cover your entire back. That way you have 360 lead shielding. So that's about it for the pregnancy portion of things. And what's great about our field is that once you do have a child, if you need a certain schedule, 
radiographers work 24 seven. So you can find a shift that'll work for you. In my specific adult hospital, they have people working four tens during the day. They have people working three twelves, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They have regular eight hour shifts, Monday through Friday with a rotating weekend. They have second shift that doesn't start until three or four o'clock and they work until midnight or 11. And of course, third shift, if you just don't ever want to sleep, um, <laughs> you can work like an 11 o'clock p.m. to 7 a.m., something like that. So whatever your scheduling needs are, once you have a child, it's a really great field to be in because you can really manipulate when you work. It's worked out for my husband and I extremely well because we avoid childcare completely and we're both working as radiographers now. So Josh will work um, day shift during the week. I work weekends. Although we don't get to see each other very much, this is a certain chapter of our lives where we focus on our kids and we do what's best for them. And we make the best out of our time together during the evenings and on the days that we do both have off. If you're here sticking around for more radiology content, then I do plan on doing like what happens when you fail the ART registry and the steps that you need to take after that um, because it is extremely disheartening when you do fail a registry, especially when you only have three attempts to do it. And I would like to help someone through that if at all possible. That's what you can look forward to next if you wanna subscribe and hang out with me. And also if you like want to stick around for my house stuff too, that's great. I hope that everyone has a great day and that you stay safe. I will see you guys next time.